Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ron Coleman. I was diagnosed with schizophrenia in 81. That was changed to chronic schizophrenia in 87. And in 1991, I gave up being a schizophrenic and went back to being Ron Coleman. So that's my life story. Uh, Uh, I don't believe that schizophrenia or any of the major mental illnesses is a lifelong condition. Um, I see people recover all the time, um, depends on how you define recovery. I tend to talk about living in recovery rather than uh, being recovered. Um, when you recover, there's, um, there are consequences. Uh, people start saying strange things about you. I was told quite often by people in the system I was not a normal schizophrenic. Uh, I've not figured that one out yet. I mean, I can try and get my head around it. What's a normal schizophrenic? Uh, then people would say, yeah, well, you were never really schizophrenic, which seems to be one of the favourite ones. You know, even though they treated you as a schizophrenic for 13 years, it seems they can change your, their mind any time they like. Uh, and the problem I have with that is, in any other branch of medicine, had I been treated for something for 13 years, and then they decided I didn't have it, uh, I think we'd call that bad medicine. <laughs> yeah, we would be saying, Wait a minute, what's going on here? Uh, 13 years you've treated me with this, and now you're saying I'm okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And the other problem I have with this idea that people can't recover is, well, what are we doing then? I, I thought we called it mental health, not mental illness. And this idea that uh, people can't recover, then we don't have a health service, we have an illness service. So. I think it's time for us to change that and start thinking about the realities of recovery. Because we see voice hearing as something that should be stopped. And yet voice hearers will tell you, um, as they work through their voice hearing experience, that the voices merely give us a message that there is a problem. Voices aren't the problem, it's a message. And what we try to do is we try to eradicate the messenger. Now that used to happen at one time, you see. What used to happen is you would, the, there would be a battle, one side would lose, and somebody would say, oh you, go and tell the king we're lost. And nobody wanted that job, did they? Why? Because we killed the messenger. That's what happened. The messenger traditionally got their head chopped. What we try to do in psychiatry is much more uh, sinister in a sense. Because we try to kill the messenger before we hear the message. Which is a bit crazy. You know? Because we should hear the message at least before we do anything. So for me, hearing voices is just normal. I've heard voices for over 30 years now. I still hear voices. They don't particularly bother me anymore, except when I'm really tired, which I'm getting now, so people beware. <laughs> but, um... but when I was a worker, I didn't see a problem in front of me. I didn't see an illness. I saw a person with gifts and strengths. I could see what they could become. Um, and I think that should be fundamentally part of every worker. Uh, it's not to look at a person as a set of problems, but who is it they want to be? Or who is it they, 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 are, they are inside? What is Because the, the creativity and the intelligence and the wonder within people that I've met in services is amazing. Um, and, and if we work with that, people move, shift. They just need even simple things like saying to a voice hearer, do you know you are absolutely amazing? You have had a voice telling you to kill yourself. 
um, hundred times a day, every day for the last 20 years, and you are still here. Do you know how strong you must be? Do you know how capable you must be that for 20 years you have made a choice every day to ignore that voice? See, we, we, we have this sort of view that people who are in our system are sick and weak and feeble and unable to do, do things. But you lot experienced these voices for two minutes earlier. And many of you sort of like thought at the end of that two minutes, wow, I don't want to cope with that. But, but imagine ten voices every day and saying really horrible things. And those people are still standing. They're still wanting to live. They may at times feel suicidal, but that... that that life force is still very much inside, wanting to, to move forward. And that's what we need to be capturing. Not the illness or the diagnosis, but that life force, that, that will, that strength, that ability with it, within people. Um, it, it may be a bit stagnant at that moment in time, but it's there. That's what we should be drawing out and working with.